everybody, Hooded Core Commander 788 here. It's time for another Vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and I have made a mistake. There is an unwritten rule on this channel that I should review the first version of any figure before I review any subsequent versions. But there's one example where I did not follow that rule. I reviewed version 2 of Grunt with the Falcon Glider before I reviewed version 1. Well, we're going to fix that right now. We're going to look at G.I. Joe's first infantry trooper from 1982, codename Grunt. I know whenever I review one of these 1982 figures, not as many people are going to watch. But I don't care. This is important. This is our history. This is our origin. And I'm going to review every damn one of them. In fact, it's going to be a sad day for me when I finally reviewed the last of these 1982 figures and I won't have the opportunity to go back and look at them anymore. But we're going to look at one today. HCC 788 presents Grunt. This is Grunt, G.I. Joe's Infantry Trooper from 1982, the first series of G.I. Joe when the line was relaunched that year. Now we have two figures here. Uh, they are similar, but there are some differences, uh, and we will look at both of them. In 1982, version 1 of Grunt was released, and this is referred to as Straight Arm Grunt. Straight Arm because of the single point of articulation at the elbow. Uh, in 1983, version 1.5 of Grunt was issued. This was a reissue of Grunt, but he had a new point of articulation, a, a swivel at the bicep that was referred to as Swivel Arm Battle Grip. Also in 1983, version 2 of Grunt was issued. Now, version 2 of Grunt was an exact copy of version 1.5, but in different colors. And version 2 of Grunt was a vehicle driver. He was the pilot of the Falcon Glider. There was a third version of Grunt, but I don't want to look at that one right now. We will look at that one when the time comes. Infantry refers to a foot soldier. An infantry trooper is a soldier that fights on foot. Uh, and so when troops are sent into combat, it's the infantry troops that are literally the boots on the ground. Grunt is a very basic army soldier, and so Grunt is most like the original G.I. Joe action soldier from 1964. Of course, G.I. Joe back then was 12 inches tall, and G.I. Joe in the 1980s was reduced to 3 and 3 quarter inches. Because Grunt is a very basic army soldier, he serves as the prototype for G.I. Joe's green shirts, which were non-differentiated soldiers that were sometimes seen in the background of G.I. Joe cartoons. Let's take a look at Grunt's accessories, starting with his weapon. This is his M16 rifle, and this is a pretty good replica of the real-world M16. You can see it's got decent detail there, and this is appropriate for the basic infantry trooper's weapon. It looks a little bit underscaled, though. When Grunt is carrying it, it looks just a little bit too small. Comparing Grunt's M16 with other M16s of the G.I. Joe line, we can see the one that came with the 1983 Airborne is about the same size as is the one that came with the 1985 Footloose. Of course, Airborne uh, had an, a bayonet on his and Footloose had a strap on his. Uh, Grunt's M16 had neither of those. Uh, then we have the one that came with Leatherneck, and this one uh, looks uh, is quite a bit larger. In fact, this one looks like it might be slightly overscaled. Next, let's look at Grunt's helmet, and Grunt came with the standard helmet that came with a lot of G.I. Joe action figures in 1982. In fact, I think it came with most G.I. Joe action figures in 1982. Uh, there's not a lot of detail on it. It has a couple holes in the side of the uh, helmet. You could clip a visor to that, but Grunt did not come with a visor. It's in this medium green color, which should pretty closely match Grunt's uniform. Grunt's final accessory is his combat backpack and this is a really tiny backpack uh, it's really I think just too small it's very dinky looking not a lot of detail it's so small that when you put it on the action figure uh, facing the front you can't even tell he's wearing a backpack the sculpting on the 1982 and 1983 backpacks are the same but the pegs are different uh, the pegs on the 1982 backpack are a little bit shorter and stubbier and squared off whereas the pegs on the 1983 backpacks are a little bit longer, slimmer, and rounded at the end, and they do fit into the uh, backs of the action figures differently. So you will need to make sure you get the right backpack for your action figure. Now let's look at the articulation on Grunt, and this is where there is a significant difference between the 1982 and 1983 releases. Uh, both of them could swivel their heads at the neck, uh, they could lift their arms up at the shoulder, and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. Uh, 1982 Grunt had a hinge at the 
elbow, he could bend at the elbow. In 1983, though, they introduced a new point of articulation. He could still bend at the elbow, about 90 degrees, but he also had a swivel at the bicep, so he could swivel his arm all the way around. Uh, both figures were held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed the figure to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees, and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Grunt, and here I have to point out there is some discoloration on my 1983 swivel arm Grunt. This is Grunt's original color. Uh, there's some yellowing on the plastic of this one, uh, but better examples of the swivel arm Grunt uh, should still be in this original green color. Grunt's head features brown hair and a high hairline, and he has kind of a stern expression here. Uh, this is not the best head sculpt, it's not the worst either, uh, but this head sculpt was used on a lot of other action figures. In 1982, besides Grunt, this head was also used for Zap, but at least they gave Zap black hair, so he looked a little different. Uh, it was also used for Grand Slam, and then in 1983, it was used for version 2 of Grand Slam and version 2 of Grunt. So this head really got around. It was used on a lot of action figures, and I'm not a big fan of the practice of reusing heads. Reusing other body parts for action figures is not such a big deal, but when you reuse a head this many times, it looks like G.I. Joe has a lot of clones on the team. Grunt's chest features a green shirt with a collar and brown straps with a grenade on one side, a knife on the other, a couple pouches, and that continues around to the back. Uh, this also is not a part that is unique to Grunt. Other action figures uh, shared this chest, including Hawk and Breaker and others. His arms feature long sleeves, bare hands, and light green pockets on the upper arms. These details were changed on the swivel arm grunt. These pockets, instead of being on the sides of the arms, were moved around to the front and given a little bit more sculpted detail. The waist piece was also changed between 1982 and 1983. The 1982 waist piece was thicker, had an H-shaped belt buckle. In 1983, they gave him a waist piece that was slimmer. Uh, they changed his belt buckle. Uh, they made his belt a little bit more detailed, and they even added a little bit more detail on his back pocket. Grunt's legs are pretty standard in green, that same color green, uh, and these legs, like a lot of other parts on Grunt, were used on other action figures. In fact, these legs were pretty standard and used on most G.I. Joe action figures from 1982. Uh, they feature unpainted pockets on the thighs and standard brown boots. It seems like since the designers at Hasbro intended Grunt to be the basic infantry trooper, uh, they wanted to make the action figure pretty basic as well. But with later infantry troopers, it seems like they figured out that's not the best way to handle this type of figure. So in 1985, with the infantry trooper Footloose and with the 1988 light infantryman hit and run, these figures are loaded with great details and great accessories. It's just unfortunate that Grunt was not given the same treatment. Let's take a look at Grunt's file card. This file card was printed on the back of the card on which the action figure was packaged. You can see some of the artwork from the front of the card there. This file card is admittedly very plain, but the reason it's so plain is because this is the first G.I. Joe file card ever written. These file cards were written by Larry Hama, the writer of the G.I. Joe comic book, and he created these, uh, he called them dossiers at the time, uh, really to just keep track of the characters and their personalities. It was later that Hasbro decided to turn his dossiers into file cards, uh, and this is rather plain because this was Larry Hama's first attempt. Uh, it has his faction as G.I. Joe, it has a portrait of Grunt here, it says he's the infantry trooper and his code name is Grunt. We have his file name as Robert W. Graves, primary military specialty infantry, secondary military specialty small arms armorer and artillery coordinator. Armorer here is misspelled. An armorer is someone who works in an armory and supplies and repairs weapons. His birthplace is Columbus, Ohio and his grade is E4. This section says, familiar with all NATO and Warsaw Pact small arms as well as domestic civilian arms. Graduated advanced infantry training, finished top 10 in his class. Qualified expert M14, M16, M1911 A1 auto pistol. In this bottom section we have a quote. It says, Grunt is a highly motivated, systematic individual. He's a stand-up guy who doesn't blow his cool in a firefight. This file card is very short and it says very little about Grunt. We learn almost nothing about his background other than his training. So why is Grunt often ignored as a character? Well, we're really not given very much here to latch onto. In G.I. Joe Media, he was mostly ignored by both the
the cartoon and the comic book. Uh, in the cartoon series, he appeared in the background sometimes, but he had few or no lines in most episodes. But Grunt was given the spotlight in a two-part story called Worlds Without End. In that storyline, somehow a handful of Joes find themselves in an alternate dimension where Cobra rules the world. It's sort of like the movie It's a Wonderful Life. We get to see what the world would be like if the Joes did not fight and defeat Cobra. Grunt really shines in that episode, and it's the first episode where we see evidence of death. Grunt finds the bones of several dead Joes from that universe, including the bones of the Grunt of that universe. He finds his own dead bones. But Grunt is strong, and he holds it together. His buddy Steeler, who's suffering from a fever caused by a mysterious insect bite, uh, he's not holding up so well, and he falls apart. Those episodes are written very well. Yes, they're kind of like Twilight Zone episodes, but they're done so well that I really can't hold that against them. Uh, they provide a lot of real drama and real emotions and real danger. Uh, they represent the cartoon at its best. In the G.I. Joe comic book, Grunt had a few moments. Uh, he had a fairly important role in issue number four, uh, entitled Operation Wingfield, uh, when he and Hawk went undercover and infiltrated a militia. His most notable moment in the G.I. Joe comic book was in issue number 55, when he retired. Uh, after serving his time, he left the army for civilian life. He went to Georgia Tech, and he got a hot girlfriend named Lola. He returned briefly to help out when the Joes were outlaws after being accused of misconduct during the Cobra Civil War. Grunt made other appearances. Grunt was really the face of G.I. Joe when the line was relaunched in 1982. He appeared in promotional material. His image was in the corner of the comic books. Uh, he was on licensed items like color forms, but he was an anonymous star. Kirk Bazigian, Hasbro's head of marketing for boys' toys back in the 80s, has said that Grunt was his favorite from that first series. Taking a look at Grunt overall, this is not a top-tier figure. It's not even a middle-tier figure. He has no unique parts, including that head that got reused a lot of times, and I really have a problem with that. However, the idea of Grunt is very important. Grunt never really had a chance. He's not flashy. He doesn't have a cool specialty or an interesting background. He doesn't come with great accessories, and he doesn't have great detail on the figure. Instead of developing his character over time, he got the spotlight a couple times before he was more or less forgotten. The way Grunt was handled in G.I. Joe reflects the way we tend to think of the common soldier. But the common soldier is G.I. Joe. The name G.I. Joe was taken from the movie The Story of G.I. Joe, which was a dramatization of the real-life war correspondent Ernie Pyle. And Ernie Pyle chose to not write about the so-called important figures in World War II. He wrote about the common soldier. He told the infantryman's story. He refused to let the world forget about those men and their sacrifices. They did the marching and the fighting and the killing and the dying, and Grunt is exactly the kind of soldier that Ernie Pyle would have written about. I think it's unfortunate that a toy line called G.I. Joe couldn't find a way to tell Grunt's story, other than in a few moments of glory. Grunt would never be the star of G.I. Joe, but his character could have been developed more, and one way to develop that character is to give him a battle buddy. My suggestion would be to pair him up with Flash, because Flash was another soon-forgotten character, uh, and there would have been a nice contrast between Grunt as the traditional soldier and Flash as the sci-fi laser trooper. So as the main characters take the spotlight, in the background you would have Grunt and his battle buddy providing support, laying down cover fire, covering a flank, and doing any other work that needed to be done. They wouldn't be the focus of any story, but through brief moments of dialogue spread out over a long period of time through a lot of stories, their banter would develop their characters. Just a few lines here and there would tell us something about them. And that would be fitting for Grunt. He's not a general. He's not a commando. He's just a guy that you can rely on to keep his head when the bullets start flying. Then, if you give Grunt an exit, like he goes to fight Cobra in another dimension, or he retires from G.I. Joe, then you look back and you realize this guy 
was really important. Uh, he was never in the foreground, but he was always there, always dependable. He wasn't the star, but he was vital. So then, when you lose him, that loss has more impact. And that's why I'm going to do something about it. I am forming a political action committee to get some respect for Grunt. We will call ourselves Disgruntled, which stands for Defending Infantry Soldier Grunt, Rejecting unfair treatment for Lola's educated dude. I'm not good with coming up with acronyms. That's not the point. The point is Grunt deserves some respect. Grunt really is the core of what G.I. Joe is. Not just the toy line, but going back to when that term was first coined. So disgruntled will fight for Grunt. We'll defend Grunt. We will march as Grunt marched. And we will win Grunt the respect he deserves. Who's with me? <laughs> Before I go, I want to correct another mistake. In my review of the 1964 G.I. Joe action soldier, I referred to him as a generic soldier. Well, that's wrong. There may be generic action figures, but there are no generic soldiers. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of those real-life grunts out there. Thanks for watching my review of Grunt. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and share this video. That's what keeps this channel going. Thanks again for watching, and remember, until next week, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Easy does it now. You're gonna be... Uh, all right. Joe's. Poor devils. They, they must have had caught one of Cobra's weapons test. Steinberg L? But, but that, that's Clutch's name. Graves? R.W.? Graves? That's you, Grunt! Yeah, well, I know I ain't dead. Hey, these guys must have been the Joe team from this world. Yeah. That's it. That one. Who's that one? Pulaski. It's me.